this is an exceptional standard of workmanship and I've got so much respect for OO Works for being able to put this out at this kind of quality. Hi there everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Jennifer Kirk, welcoming you up here to the loft on Weir Yard. Now today I'd like to extend a huge thank you to James Petz, friend of the channel and also a keen Monday clubber who has very kindly arranged for his OO Works Adams Jubilee to be sent directly here so that I can do a review on it. Now this is a loaned model so it will be being sent on to him but actually it is a huge vote of faith by James to actually have it sent direct from the manufacturer to me so he hasn't even seen it yet but I'm really actually excited by this. I've taken a look at it and what I've seen so far has been really impressive. Can it continue to live up to that standard? Overall, is this going to be a model that I can recommend to you guys? Well, come with me and let's take a look. In association with Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts, and also in association with the Jenny Kirk Monday Club Wagon, which is currently available to buy now from Rails of Sheffield at the link in the description box down below. But do hurry because stocks are short and they are selling incredibly fast. This is an ideal opportunity to pick up what is sure to be a highly collectible item in years to come. But let's take a look at the main feature of today's video. That OO Works Adam's Jubilee. I'd like to thank James Petz for his generosity in loaning me a new locomotive that he's had on order for a while but this is something from a mark that we've never ever looked at on the channel and that's uh, OO Works. Now as you can see on the box there it says creator of handmade limited edition ready to run models and these shouldn't be considered um, in the same light as uh, stuff from Hornby, from Backman, from Hellion. This is more akin to an incredibly well-made kit that has been put together uh, exceptionally well and then professionally painted and finished. And this is kind of when you see um, kits from DJH or Gladiator. This is what everybody is aiming to make. Um, and I know from my own forays into kit building that it is really, really hard. So I've got immense um, kudos for the uh, person behind OO Works who is making these. So what we've actually got here is the London and South Western Railway uh, stroke Southern Railway 042 Adams Jubilee. And this particular one has been finished in Southern Railway Olive, uh, which uh, James Petz has uh, opted for. And I do approve of his choice. Now, James is a keen Monday clubber as well. So uh, and I've, I've met him at a number of shows um, and um, it's just really, really generous that he's loaned me this model. In fact, it's come straight to me from OO Works. Um, so I'm being really, really gentle with this. There is a little certificate in here, but I'm not going to show it because um, it actually shows exactly how much this cost. And I don't know whether James has um, somebody close to him in his life that he's told a different lower figure, perhaps. Um, so I'm not going to show that on screen. But it comes with a really uh, professionally presented little bit of a brief history here. And it's quite interesting to read. And uh, it's not a class of locomotive that I was ever familiar with. And whilst they did just about scrape into British Rail ownership. They were, to all intents and purposes, gone from the main line by the time British Railways took over. Um, but they were a well-regarded locomotive. Uh, first engine completed May 1887, 50th year jubilee 
of uh, Queen Victoria's reign, hence uh, the name, the Jubilee class. Um, they went through a number of um, uh, different changes, and actually they were well regarded by their crews, so much so that the crew still preferred these Jubilees to the locomotives that were supposedly supposed to be their successors, um, and they actually ended up having a, a higher yearly mileage. Uh, by the 1920s, they were seen on branch line work, pickup goods, shunting duties, so very versatile locomotives. 90 were built, all were still in service until 1928 when the first six were withdrawn and broken up, and uh, that marked the decline of the class. Um, theoretically, there was four that entered into British Railway stock in 1948, but they were never renumbered, kept their southern lettering, with 629 being the last one in general service, ending its days shunting at Eastleigh, and so was withdrawn by the end of that year. Although there was one other that survived longer in departmental use, supplying steam to Eastleigh Boiler Yard, as number DS3191, which was formerly number 612, that lasted actually through till November 1951, um, but um, it, it, it didn't survive uh, to preservation. So there's a little bit of information about cleaning, lubrication, and underneath it's very much more akin to a, a well-made kit than a ready-to-run model. Um, but that's okay, and actually when I've had a look at it in the box, um, it's um, really come across as quite a substantial and very well-made model. Now it's not DCC ready, um, but there is enough space in the boiler to hardwire a decoder, and that's pretty much standard with um, any locomotive of this type. Um, so let's just have a look. Um, there's a little bit of information here about um, just being a bit careful. Nothing that we haven't seen with ready-to-run locomotives. And uh, just going to very carefully remove this. And as that paperwork did suggest, this is uh, the locomotive and tender are attached to each other. Now, there's no separate detailing. It all comes uh, complete. And the first thing that strikes me about this model, and in deference to all the people whose OCD starts to twitch when I uh, move models around, on my wooden board. I'm just going to leave this packaging underneath it. But what has struck me is that the quality of the paint finish and the lining especially is incredibly good. I mean this, if you'd have said to me that this was tampo printed and that it was done uh, by a machine in a factory, I would have believed you. It really is an incredible finish on this. Now as this is a, um, a metal um, uh, hand-built locomotive there is a lot of weight in this it has to be said both tender and locomotive very very heavy and um, it, this is a locomotive that will have no trouble whatsoever with adhesion and to put it into context this is probably the heaviest locomotive of this size that I've ever held um, it's on a part of something like a Hornby double O locomotive it, it feels like it's got that kind of level of cast weight in it. Every piece of detail on this is correct and is made from metal or castings by the look of it. Um, I can't see anything that looks to me as if it's plastic and I, I'm going to put that down to an incredibly good paint finish. All of these greedy rails on the side of the tender, they're all uh, a metal etching. Uh, we're just going to look very carefully down there into the cab and we still got that level of finish that we get on a mass-produced model that's gone through um, some very intricate machines that can carefully print all of the detail, but it's all there on this hand-built model. I mean, this is an exceptional standard of workmanship, and I've got so much respect for OO Works for being able to put this out at this kind of quality. I do love the safety valve bonnet on there. That really does look the part and the detail too it actually looks far more detailed than the things that we see coming through from some of the main manufacturers front face of the locomotive captured really really well um, we are we do have the tension lock couplings fitted to this out of the box um, but they're not in them pockets um, they do look to be adapted uh, backman style couplings that have just had the wings removed and then screwed on quite tightly there. On the front, 
and then also on the back of the tender and there's there's no sideways motion with these all of the buffers are fully sprung front and back but this really is a sublime model um, I personally would have been tempted with the London and South Western Railway livery, um, such is my want. But actually, um, I have to admit that this um, Southern Railway olive green really is attractive. The class wears it incredibly well. Now, 042, um, probably more associated with things like 14XX auto tanks, um, but of course, this locomotive is very much from a different era. And as such, um, locomotives did tend to be smaller. Um, and um, as the brief history of the class um, attests, it didn't really hinder them. They were a, an exceptionally well-designed locomotive. Looking between the frames, we've got all of that really, really slender valve gear. And that, that actually looks, um, I don't think it uh, goes around with the wheels at all, but it actually looks like it's made from separate pieces um, to me. And certainly it really does look the part in there. The splashes too, um, all the angles are really, um, really just as you would expect. And I can't tell that it's a kit. I'll be honest with you, unless you turn it over and even then the quality of the finish does keep going down here. Um, I, I couldn't say it was a kit. The quality of the finish on this is exceptional. And uh, if I'd have been shown this without knowing its um, heritage, um, I would have um, thought that it was mass produced. It is of that kind of uh, consistent quality. Um, but it, it's it's above and beyond that. It, it the the standard of workmanship on this is sublime, and um, it's just incredible to think that somebody has assembled this um, much in the same way that somebody would assemble um, a DJH or a Gladiator kit. Um, but the the standard is amazing. The wheels too really actually look a lot finer than you would get on a ready to run model. Um, the actual tyres are so much thinner. Now the rear uh, pony truck there is carried, um, it's not in a kind of radial axle which I suspect that the uh, prototype would have had, but we've got this kind of uh, sprung loaded pickup truck there which uh, just uh, goes from side to side. The drive itself is through a vertical brass worm gear uh, just there that goes to a, a brass gear that's on the axle. Again, very reminiscent of uh, the days of Hornby 00. Um, but the whole mechanism feels really quite nice. Uh, pretty free running on uh, the other wheels. And uh, by the looks of things, we've also got pickups uh, available from the tender wheels as well as the wheels on the locomotive. I really do like the attention to all of the uh, uh, the spraying there on the locomotive body. It's sprayed underneath. There's no sign of overspray or any other issues such as that. And certainly this is an amazing model. Now, as it's not DCC fitted, I can't actually run it on a uh, wear yard. You will see some photographs of it posed, um, but that's with the layout turned off. So all I can really show you is it running on my DCC concept rolling road on DC. But I'm really intrigued to see just how well and how smoothly a locomotive of this caliber does actually run. So let's take it over to the test track. And this is the only area in Weir Yard where I'm actually able to run up a DC locomotive. As this locomotive is a loner, it's not mine, uh, and it does require hard wiring if you want to go down the DCC uh, fitting route, uh, I'm going to leave it be. Let's just see how well it goes. And actually, there's a fairly uh, immediate start there. This locomotive hasn't been run in, and as a hand-built example, then I would suggest that actually this, more than anything else, would probably benefit from a uh, an extended running-in session on something like the DCC Concepts Rolling Road. And uh, let's try it in reverse. 
it's actually a little bit smoother in reverse. Um, quite often you find that a locomotive will run better one way than the other. Uh, extensive running in will do a lot to assist with that. Um, but certainly it does exactly what it says on the tin. And it does go up to a reasonably fast speed. That wasn't 100% power. I'm just going to put it back to going forwards. There's a slight tight spot in there, but again, I think with a little bit of lubrication and running in, that's going to be just fine. And really, when you consider that if you were to build uh, a locomotive such as this yourself, uh, it's very, very difficult and involved to get everything working perfectly. So this is actually really, really good. And I've had ready to run locomotives from major manufacturers that have run nowhere nearly as well as this has out of the box. So actually, if this were my locomotive, I'd be quite happy with this. I'd move on personally to a DCC fitting for which I would recommend the uh, Trainomatic, uh, probably the wired six pin decoder. And the only reason for that is because they tend to be always in stock, very plentifully available, and is quite straightforward with that wiring loom to do a hard wiring install into the locomotive. Depending on space, what you may look to do is to actually hard wire in something like a six pin uh, socket these can be got from companies such as DCC Concepts. And then I'd use the smaller factor direct plug six pin decoder from Trainomatic uh, just to fit into the space. What is apparent with the uh, really great weight and the pickup from uh, the tender and also the driving wheels is that I wouldn't expect this to be in need of a stay alive. Um, and it's something that uh, personally I wouldn't bother fitting because I don't believe that it would need it. One thing which I do want to mention, I've just noticed this, is if I run this up to full speed, um, a lot of the noise you hear is because of the weight of the locomotive unsprung, pressing down onto track that has no kind of underbase to it. But if I lift this locomotive up so it's now no longer running on those rollers, it's just using the tender pickups. That is actually a very, very quiet motor. And again, I mean, it's just a little bit of a tight spot that uh, a bit of running in would go a long way to sorting out. But that is an exceptionally quiet mechanism. All in all, I'm very, very impressed with this. And it's actually opened my eyes to uh, models from uh, the likes of OO Works. Because even though they're billed as being handmade, the standard of finish and the quality of the build and everything about it, the detail, the paint finish especially, and also the running qualities of the motor and the, uh, the drivetrain, the wheels, the pickups, is second to none. This is a superb locomotive and certainly for getting an example of a class which we're unlikely to see in the near future from any of the regular mainstream manufacturers, this is a great way to plug those gaps in your locomotive fleet. Can I recommend this model? Wholeheartedly, I can. And a big, big thank you very much to James Petz for lending this to me for doing this review. If you want to find out more about OO Works, we're going to put a link to their website in the description box down below. Well, I hope you found this video really enjoyable. If you did, don't forget to tickle that like button, share it too, let other people know about the content we've got here. And if you haven't already done so, then do please consider subscribing to the channel. You can also head over to Rails of Sheffield at the link down below to pick up your own very exclusive Acura Scale Jenny Kirk Monday Club wagon. These are now in stock and available to buy immediately at the time of recording this video. But do hurry because stocks are limited. They've been selling incredibly well and they are sure to sell out soon. So this is an ideal opportunity to grab yourself 
what is sure to be a highly collectible item in the future. But until next time, this is me, Jenny Kirk, saying you take great care of yourself. Happy modelling. Bye for now. Today's video is sponsored by Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders designed to be fully compatible with every manufacturer's locomotive. Visit train-o-matic.com to browse the full range and see what they've got suitable for you. I'd like to send out a huge thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon. And an extra special huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Offshore Allen, oorail.co.uk, Michael Lockie, Helen Sink, Peter Bolton, Brian and Dorothy Mudd, Gary Lewis, David Quinn, Sparky107107, George Botterini, Chris Moss, Robert Steers, MD of San Juan Model Company and Grantline Products, Sam Yates, Dale Williams, John N. from NC, NYMRish, Jonathan Foster, Peter, Graham Foster, Clifford Ison, Larry W. Grant, NI Railways 4000 class, Ian Coulson, and Alan Dickerson. Thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this.